Now looking at some blood vessels on the torso here, firstly coming from the heart, of course we have the aorta, and the three major branches that we have here coming off the arch are the brachiocephalic trunk, which we can see again here, and then the left common carotid and left subclavian arteries. Now if we just follow the left subclavian for a sec, we can see it again just here, and we can just see a tiny bit of it here, but remember that the subclavian artery ends at the lateral border of the first rib. Now the first rib is quite visible here. We can see the lateral border, so if we follow a line straight up from that, we've pretty much lost the subclavian artery by the time we get to here, and this would be axillary, the axillary artery. So we could pin subclavian here or here, the left subclavian. With the right side, of course, we have the brachiocephalic trunk here and here, and then that splits into the right common carotid and the right subclavian. So the right subclavian, even shorter than the left, and can be seen in a couple of places here though. One, two, three. And then we have lateral border of the first rib here, and after that it will be the axillary artery. Now then, with the veins, the same sort of thing happens where we have an axillary vein here becoming subclavian, so the right subclavian vein here quite short. Once the subclavian vein is joined by the internal jugular vein, it becomes the brachiocephalic vein. Now the right brachiocephalic vein is quite short. The left one, quite a bit longer, it's got further to go uh, from where the uh, internal jugular and subclavian have joined. So the left brachiocephalic vein quite a bit longer than the right. And again, we can see an axillary uh, vein here. And then um, yeah, we can see it just disappearing uh, down this side. So that's pretty much it for the vessels we can see on this model. Sorry.